ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalalah and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire my dear brothers and sisters in Islam again we are in the month of Sha'ban and we are coming upon the blessed month of Ramadan and if Allah blesses us to see it then this would truly be a great favor a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as we mentioned previously, that the Sahaba used to, for five months, prepare for the next coming Ramadan, and here we are weeks away, if we live to see it. So what can we do? What do we need to do? What do we need to reflect upon so we prepare for entering that month? This reflection today will be about what you prioritize in your life. Is it this dunya or is it the akhirah? But the sole message is, our priority should always be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, we spend our time, our energy, our money, our wealth, our strength, our youth, chasing the dunya. Money, love, fame, the dream job, but it's all false happiness. None of those things really give you happiness that lasts. Usually, one is thinking that these things will give me a better car, or a better life, or a bigger home, or some worldly status. But many times they're led to realize that it doesn't provide you that. You cannot buy that happiness. Allah has to place that happiness in your heart. But we're warned about this in the Quran, in the book of Allah, the speech of Allah. Alhaakum al takafur hatta zurtum al maqabir. Allah says what means <clears throat> rivalry in the worldly increase. Rivalry in worldly increase. Looking to get more. This competition to just have more and more and more of this material world. From the remembrance, it diverts you, it distracts you from the remembrance of Allah until you come to the graves. And when you come to your grave, you can't go back and say, give me another chance to spend my life serving you rather than competing for more wealth or more property or whatever it may be in this dunya. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالَكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً وَاللَّهُ عِنْدُهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means your wealth and your children, they're but a trial for you. And Allah has with him a great reward. Allah has with him the reward that is great, that will be for eternity, that will be everlasting. So did you ever think of the results of chasing the dunya? Of all your worldly efforts? Of making it more important than the akhirah? Allah says, Allah says what means it will be that day that they see it, Yom Al-Qiyamah, the day of standing, the day of resurrection. Yom al-Fazr al-Akbar, the day of the greatest torment and terror. It will be that day as though they had not remained in the dunya, in this life, except for but an afternoon or a morning. That is it. So this life that seems long to us in comparison to just Yom al-Qiyamah, not eternity, just to that day, مِثْلَرُهُمْ خَمْسِنَا فَسَنَةً that is 50,000 years long, 
will feel like just an afternoon or a morning. Allah, He says, إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا Allah says what means if you do good, say, if you do good, you do good for your own selves. You are the ones who will reap the reward. Because Allah said, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ For those who believe, is there a reward for goodness? The goodness you do except for Allah to give you more goodness. If you do good, you do good for your own selves. And if you do evil, you're just doing it to your own selves. You will be called to account for the harm and the evil and the sin that you do. So the lavish homes and cars, the fancy vacations, these fabulous glitzy weddings that people put on, all of this wealth even to put into bid'ah, innovation when it comes to janazas, when it comes to the janazas, the funerals and the likes of these matters, the ritzy clothes and shoes, the jewelry that people hoard in this life, these are temporary worldly fixes. This is like putting a band-aid on a big open wound. It may just buy you time to get to the hospital, but in the end, it's not going to really protect you or cover anything. These things that we strive after, they don't get buried with you. We see our beloved ones buried on a daily basis. We see it across the globe, wrapped in white sheets, and nothing else. Nothing should be put in with them. Not a bracelet, not a ring, not a necklace, not someone, something they love. Nothing gets buried with you, but you shroud it in your akfan, your shrouds. So nothing of that will go with you, but dedicating your time and your effort into something that lasts for eternity makes more sense. Even a little kid realizes and understands that eternity is more than one minute. They realize that a lot is more than a little. And here we are chasing this short life and at the expense of the akhirah, which is for eternity. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ma qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiru sabeel. The Prophet وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, be in, this, be in this life, be in this world as if you are a stranger or a traveler passing by a town. The stranger is always cautious of his or her surroundings. They're never content, they're never comfortable, they're always on the lookout. And the traveler may make a pit stop, may stay one night, but they don't carry everything they have and they own with them. This is the life of this world. It is temporary, and it's just like a pit stop to a final destination. But where do you want your final destination to be? Do you want it to be Jannah, or are you fine with it being Jahannam? The fire that has been raging since Allah created Jahannam at the beginning of time. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, know that Ibn Umar then he added to this, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْقَذِرْ الصَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْقَذِرْ الْمَسَاءِ وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتَكَ وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتَكَ لِمَرَدِكَ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لِمَوْتِكَ رواه البخاري This is also the authenticated portion of the narration. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Therefore, in the evening, do not expect to live until the morning. And if you're in the morning alive, do not expect to live until the evening. And take advantage of your health before sickness comes to you. While you're healthy, serve your Lord and serve your Creator. Worship in the best of ways before sickness comes and it grounds you to the point where you cannot even maybe function or speak or do any action. And take advantage of your life before death comes to you because there's no returning to say, I can do more. So live in this world with humility. مَنْ تَوَادَ عَلِ اللَّهِ رَفَعَهُ Whoever humbles himself in this dunya, in this life, for the sake of Allah, Allah will raise him up in statuses and degrees. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, therefore, as you're preparing to, prepare for the akhirah, because it will come to all of us whether we like it or not. Consider building yourself a home in Jannah. Consider doing stuff that will get you your sins forgiven. قال رسول الله عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ثابر على اثنت عشرة ركعة من السنة دنا الله له بيتا في الجنة أربع ركعات قبل الظهر وركعتين بعدها وركعتين بعد المغرب وركعتين بعد العشاء وركعتين قبل الفجر <coughs> This hadith which is authentic in the Sunnah of Al-Tirmidhi Shaykh Al-Dani Bayrin as Hassan the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is regular in their 12 rak'ahs of sunnah that go along with the obligatory prayers, the five obligatory prayers, whoever is regular in their 12 rak'at of sunnah prayers, Allah will build for him or her a house in paradise. 
The four rak'ahs before Dhuhr and the two after them. The two after Maghrib, the two after Isha, and the two before Fajr. Whoever is regular in these, then Allah will build for him or her a, a place in Jannah. But what does that do for you to be regular in it? You have to take time away from your dunya. So many of us, we sacrifice doing those prayers. We sacrifice building a home in Jannah. And we work on just building our home in this dunya. Our life in this dunya. Our status in this dunya. And at that, it's at the expense of the akhirah. You want to have all your sins forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says what I'm about to say, once in the day, in the morning, or says it once in the evening, or says it once in the month, then Allah will forgive all his sins or her sins if they die on that day or in that evening or in that month. La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. La ilaha illallah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd. La ilaha illallah, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Fifteen seconds of your time. And you're saying something that Shaykh al-Albani, he authenticated this in Sunan al-Nisa'i, uh, in the, the narration of the Sunan al kubara it, and it was authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani. You say this thing that takes what? 15 seconds. All of your sins will be forgiven if you die in that day or that night or that month. The pearls, the gems from the sunnah that we neglect to get us salvation, Yom al-Qiyamah, to get us salvation by being admitted into Jannah with no punishment in Jahannam. Yet we're squandering this away because this life, this dunya, this earth is more valuable to us than that home that is everlasting. This is where we need to get ready for Ramadan. We need to switch this around and put all our marbles in for focusing on the Akhirah. So the worries and the anxieties are dominating our lives so much that we'll miss obligatory prayers. We'll miss Farah, we'll miss Fajr, or we'll miss Dhuhr or Asr or Maghrib or Isha. We'll miss those prayers. Prayers miss. Opportunities for Sadaqah, financial or non-financial. Aspects of charity, we miss out on these. Have we forgotten our meeting with Malik al Mot. Have we forgotten that we will meet the angel of death, that he will come to us and take our souls? Have we forgot our meeting with Allah where he will weigh our deeds on the scales, the mizan, good and bad, they will be made into weights and it will be weighed and then Allah will question us. Allah says what means draw near, draws near for mankind directing. The Prophet in his lifetime he said, and he held his two fingers by each other. He said, I have been sent in relation to the closeness of the proximity of the hour, the last hour, the last day, like this. And this was in his time how many thousands of years ago. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, be mindful of this ayah draw near, draws near for mankind the reckoning while they turn away in heedlessness. We don't want to learn those lessons. We don't want to learn from the lessons of death and struggle and suffering we're seeing around us. Our focus is only on ourselves. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أقتربت الساعة ولا تزداد الناس على الدنيا إلا حرصا ولا تزداد منهم إلا بعدا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the hour has drawn near, but man's kind desire for the worldly life is only increasing. We see with time that more people. You would think they would come back to Allah with all we're seeing of war and bloodshed and earthquakes and, and these disasters we're seeing. They're not natural by a mother nature. They're what Allah has decreed, what Allah has given a, a command for them to happen. So we see all of these things, but our desire for this worldly life is only increasing. We keep wanting it more and more. And they're only becoming more distant from Allah. And this hadith is in uh, Shaykh al-Albani. He authenticated as sahih in the Sunnah Ibn Abi Al-Dunya. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Allah says what means, and it will be said, this day, we will forget you. Imagine a day where a Muslim, instead of going to Allah's Rahmah, to His mercy, to His forgiveness, to His shade, yet being told, no, this day we're going to forget you. Because you may have said such and such or done such and such, but this day we're going to forget you because you used to forget the meaning of this meeting of this day of yours and your abode is the hellfire. There is none who can help you. And we seek refuge with Allah from being in that situation. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us reflect upon what Allah Azza has revealed to us in the Quran and in the Sunnah. We have the opportunity to get high stations of Jannah. 
to be with the Prophet ﷺ, to be with the Anbiya, to be with all of the Prophets, to be with the Shuhada, to be with the martyrs, to be with the Siddiqeen, the first to believe, the righteous companions, to be with the Salihin, to be with the righteous ones. These would be excellent companions. And most of all, you have the chance to be in Jannah, to make it to paradise. A day where you will get to see the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. And He will reveal it to all of those who make it. And this sounds amazing. Along with all of the other minor things in Jannah that will be gifts and rewards. Yet still many of us choose not to strive for it. But if you place something like that on this earth, boy, we would race for it. We would give everything. We would sacrifice our own families just to have those types of things in this life. And this is the true reality. So we've sadly become distracted, absorbed by this dunya, lost sight of our purpose. Because Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah did not create jinn or mankind except to worship Him. This was the reason, this was the purpose of our creation. Our main goal should be the pleasure of Allah and subsequently being admitted into Jannah. بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ حَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى And Allah says what means, but no, you still prefer the life of this world while the hereafter is better than that which, rem- and that which will remain and be everlasting. This is how foolish we've become. These are things that if you ask a little kid again, they would know which is greater, which is better, which is larger. Yet we're making foolish decisions. Indeed, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the Akhirah is better for us. But we need to use our time in this dunya to work for it. So why do we continue to prioritize this dunya over Jannah? Maybe because it's cool. But how dumb would that be? I'm going to lose Jannah because it's not going to look cool to my homies, to my buddies, to my friends, to my family. This is the stupidity that has engulfed the brains of Bani Adam. That everything is about how we look to our brother or sister, how we look to our friends or our companions, how we look to our family members or to the other people. So you neglect your prayers. You neglect your prayers, fearing that you might not look cool amongst your peers. You neglect your prayers, fearing that your friends may think that that's not cool. Like, why are you wasting your time? Some neglect their prayers in that way. Some neglect coming to the masjid to pray because they don't want their family members, their Muslim family members, to label them as you're being extreme or you're too religious or you're fanatical. Why? Because the person comes and he prays in the masjid. وَالْعَيَادُ billah. These are realities that we are facing. You choose not to live according to what the Qur'an says, according to the sunnah of the best of mankind, وسلم, who cried, Beka, Allahumma ummati, ummati, O oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah, wanting us to be saved from what this world is calling us to. What shaitan has beautified of us, of pleasure, when it's really just distraction so that we follow his destructive path. This is the reality. You choose to not wear the hijab or the jilbab for the sisters because it's out of fashion. And nowadays in some societies they're wearing it just because it's in fashion. You spend hours listening to music, staring at magazines filled with haram pictures. Now this social media tidal wave that reeks of shaitan. It's all shaitan. All of it is shaitan. Yeah, you may say, oh, but I listen to Quran on it or I may get a hadith on it. That's all fine and dandy. But what we're seeing now, the engulfment, the, the addiction of that phone being in your hand, you can't eat if it's not in your hand, you can't go to the bathroom if it's not in your hand, you can't pray if it's not in your pocket. This is the foolishness that we fell upon. So maybe we're too busy. Maybe our reason for preferring this life over the akhirah is we're too busy or we have no time. Our Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba عنهم, they were busy too. But they never felt short of their duties to worship and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ikhtanana khamsa qabla khams. He said, take advantage, benefit from five things before five. Shibabaka qabla haramik, your youth before your old age. While you're young, you can do, you have the energy, the muscle, the strength, the capability. Value that time, take advantage of it, serve Allah, worship Allah. Imagine some people don't make sense that they don't pay their whole life. And then they start maybe when they're older and they never really taste the beauty of the, the true sajda, the complete sajda. For the one who can do so. 
وصحتك قبل سقمك. Take advantage of your health before your illness. Because you could be the healthiest of sorts one day. And you see someone goes to the doctor regularly. Yada, yada, yada. And then they go to the next checkup and all of a sudden they have a stage 4 cancer. وَخَنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقَرِكْ Take value, take advantage of, value, benefit from any wealth you have before you become poor. وَفَرَاغَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكْ Take advantage of your free time before it comes to pass. For the youth especially, but even for the elders, many of us have free time and it's squandered because of again that phone or some dunya matter. And you lose out on so many things. While you have free time, you have no idea what busy is yet. For many of you, you have no idea what busy is. Busy to you is your mind being busy with this life. How can I get more money? How can I be more stable? How can I get higher in the eyes of the people? This is what you're busy with. You ain't busy, busy. And this is where we influence, we put our time in. And the last one, وَحَيَاتِكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And your life before your death, because there is no returning back. The truth is, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we've forgotten our goal and messed up our priorities. The pleasures of this dunya, they're nothing compared to the akhirah. The hadith Qudsi, where Allah Azza wa said, أَعْدَتُ لِعْدَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عِمًا رَأَتْ وَلَا أُضِمٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Where Allah said in the hadith Qudsi, what means, I uh, prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen. Go to the nicest vacation spot. It's the slums when you compare it to Jannah. What no ear has heard. Go listen to the finest tune of whatever you don't think is so beautiful and melodical to your ears. It's like listening to fingers on a chalkboard when it compares to what you'll hear in Jannah. And what can't even occur to the human heart. All the things we think we can conquer because we're mighty humans. It ain't nothing compared to what Allah has in store for the people who make it to Jannah. May Allah make us from them. So if you find yourself constantly prioritizing the dunya over the akhirah, strike that balance. You're alive. Make the niyyah. Ramadan is coming up. May Allah allow us to see it. Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. Take that step. You're still breathing the doors of tawbah. Always open until that sun rises in the west or until your soul is rattling in your throat. So do not wait any longer, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. وَجُوهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاعِنَا لَيْسَعْيَهَا رَاضِيَةً other faces that day will be happy, pleased on the account of the effort they put in earlier in the dunya life. If you want to be happy on al qiyamah, if you want to be in the shade of Allah, if you want to be in a state of calmness where the majority of the Adam will be fleeing and running out of fear and sweating out of fear, you do so by the efforts you put into this dunya. <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Ramadan is approaching but what have we done to prepare for it? If we get to see it we want to start preparing from now and today's preparation topic is that we start to prioritize Allah over the dunya we revolve our lives around Allah around Islam around the Qur'an, around the Sunnah, we don't revolve those things around our life and our choices. Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةَ فَلَهُ أَشْرَعًا ثَالِهَا وَأَزِيدٍ وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةَ فَجَزَاؤُهُ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلَهَا أَوْ أَغْفِرَ أَوْ أَغْفِرَ وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ ذَرَاعًا وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي ذَرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ بَاعًا وَمَنْ آتَانِ يَمْشِي آتَيْتَهُ هَرْوَلًا Abu Dhar, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah عز و جل said another hadith Qudsi. This is the hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated that is the speech of Allah. Allah عز و جل, he said, he who comes with a good deed, he'll be rewarded ten times that or more. This is rahma. This is something we could never get or find in even the most generous person in this life. Whoever does the opposite, does a sin or an evil, his reward or his punishment will only be one of that or I might forgive him. He who draws close to me a handstand, I will come close to him an arm's length. He who comes close to me an arm's length, 
I will come close to him or draw near to him a fathom's length. Whoever comes to me walking, I will come to him running. This is your Lord. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla. We should run 99.99% to him and he should not even have to come to us. Yet Allah is looking. He's giving us every opportunity to earn his mercy, to earn his forgiveness, to make it into Jannah, to earn his pleasure. All you have to do is come. And even if you come walking, he said, I'll come to him running. And whoever comes to me, the rest of the Hadith Qudsi says, and whoever faces me with sins nearly as great as the earth, I will meet him with forgiveness nearly as great as that, provided he does not commit shit. He does not worship anything along with me. This is the superiority of Tawheed. This is something only being upon Tawheed that you can get. Only worshiping Allah alone without partners. No shit. And you just try to move your life towards Allah and Allah will come to you and meet you not halfway. Allah will meet you more closer to your end. And Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-kayyis man dana nafsahu wa amana lima ba'da al-mawt wal-ajiz man atba' nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah. Rawah al-Tirmari wa hadha hadith al-Hasan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said a wise man is the one who calls himself to account he refrains from evil doing, de- e- doing evil deeds as much as possible. And he does noble deeds, things that will benefit him after his death. But the foolish person is the one who subdues himself to his temptations. My temptations say this, my desires are feeling this, so I'm going to fulfill them. This is the foolish one. And he seeks from Allah not to be protected from committing sin. He seeks from Allah fulfillment of his vain desires. That Allah just gives him what he is asking for. Abu Darda, he said, حَوَّلْتُ أَنْ أَجْمَعْ بَيْنَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ He said, رضي الله عنه, I tried to reconcile between this world and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, but I couldn't. فَتَرَقْتُ الدُّنْيَا So I left this world. وَأَهْتَمْتُ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And he had focused on Allah عز وجل. Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم يوم القيامة من عند ربه حتى يسأل عن خمس عن عمره فيما أثناه وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه وماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وماذا عمل فيما علم This hadith which is sahih لغيره in the sunnah with Tirmidhi The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the feet of the son of Adam will not move on the day of resurrection till he or she is asked about five things so these things, if we're going to be asked about them, Yom al shouldn't you ask yourself about them now? So what are these? About your life and what you did with it. How did you spend your life? In halal or haram, pursuing halal or haram, pursuing the akhir or the, dun- or the dunya. You'll be asked about your life and how you spent it. You'll be asked about your youth and how you spent it or how you wore your body out in it. What did you do when you were young, when you were able, when you were capable, when you were healthy? When your body didn't hurt with every move of your leg or every movement of your arm? What did you do in your youth in those times? Youth is not teenagers. Youth is 20s, 30s, maybe even 40s nowadays. What did you in the time? With your wealth, how did you earn your wealth? How did you spend it? Allah will ask you about those things. So be mindful of how you earn your wealth. Be mindful of where you spend it and how you spend it. And you'll be asked about what you did with the knowledge you have. With the knowledge you got. With the knowledge you received. Was it in one ear and out the other? Was it, mm, I don't agree with this. You know, I'm going to have to change some things in my life. I don't want to change. Or was it Allah said, Allah's messenger said, that's what I'm going to do. You'll be asked about these things. So maybe we're not ready to go to that next level to be da'i, to be a caller to the deen of Allah. But you can still help show the truth about Islam and Muslims. So the question is, will you be held accountable for it? Because Allah knows that you're capable. Will you help be held accountable for not having, acting upon something? Because you're going to say you didn't have the knowledge, but you were capable of seeking the knowledge. You were capable of driving to the masjid for a halakha, coming to Jum'ah on time so you can benefit buying Islamic, authentic literature, books, so you can study your deen and know your deen. Allah has given us the capability, the money, the youth, and the energy, but we just keep spending it on the dunya. Don't learn the hard way. 
So ask yourselves, my brothers and sisters in Islam, when you say yes or no to participate in something, to do something for the sake of Allah, ask yourself, is there, is there, if there was money, would I go? If there was food, would I go? If I could win a prize, would I go? If it was for school or to get a good grade, would I go? Would I do it? If it was for a vacation or to earn something or to, to go somewhere for enjoyment or entertainment, would you do it? We would do anything for our banks to show our higher balance. We'll do anything for our countries. There ain't no country in Islam. But we would do everything to defend our flag or our country. But when it comes to Islam, we're quiet. We hide ourselves and we brush it under the carpet. Out, we come out pride for our countries, we come out in droves. Yet the minds of the Masajid get one line, maybe start of a second one, when it should have three or four or five on a daily basis. So what will you do for Islam, for Allah, for the Sunnah of the best of mankind to be one that survives? I leave you with this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Ubaidah, he came with the wealth from Bahrain, and the Ansar, they heard that he was coming. So they were excited and happy because he was coming with something that they were looking to get a share of, to get a part of. So they came and they attended the Fajr prayer with the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet ﷺ was done, he went away. So they intercepted him. They got him and they got hold of him. And he smiled to them. And he said, I think you've heard that Abu Ubaidah has brought some wealth from Bahrain. So they said, yes, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Abshiru wa amillu ma yusurrukum fa wallahi ma al-faqr akhsha alaykum walakinni akhsha alaykum an tubsit al-dunya alaykum kama busita kama busita ala man kana qablakum qablakum fatanafasuha kama tanafasuha fatuhlikakum kama ahlakatum The Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith which is sahih in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah he told them, okay you're happy now because there's some money, you're looking for your pie, you're looking for your share of that, of that, of that wealth. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, be of good cheer. Hope for getting from Allah what will make you happy. This is the way we're going to be. Okay, you're going to seek goodness. Allah gives us good in this life and in the next life and save us from the torment of the fire. But he said, by Allah, I do not fear poverty for you. Rather, I fear that you will enjoy ease. I fear that you will enjoy ease, that you will enjoy the wealth, you will enjoy what Allah blesses you with, and plenty, like those who came before you, and that you will compete with one another as they did, and that you will be destroyed as they were. Listen to that message. This of all the narration should help us focus on the akhirah over this dunya. The Prophet ﷺ didn't fear for us poverty. He feared that we would be blessed with some wealth, with some plenty, with some ease, and we would take advantage of it. And in that time, would we think, Allah, no, we'll just compete with one another to get more and more, to outdo our brother, to look uh, better than our brother, to have more or higher than our brother or our sister or whoever it may be. Until we get to the point where it destroys us like the nations before us who were destroyed because of the same mentality. May Allah make us of those who prioritize the akhirah over the dunya, and make us of those who implement that sincerely in our hearts so that we, inshallah, if blessed with the coming of Ramadan and being able to see it, we're already on that path to prioritizing Allah, Islam, the Quran, the Sunnah over anything else from this dunya. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات أحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيد الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين